Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jeb Smith, real estate broker here in Southern California, and today we're going to discuss the extension of the foreclosure and eviction moratorium that was passed yesterday on August 27th. Now, this relates to any federally backed mortgage by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or FHA. Yesterday, the FHFA, that's the Federal Housing Finance Agency and HUD, both came out and saying that they are going to extend that eviction and foreclosure moratorium until December 31st. If you've been paying attention to this, this is the third extension. So this gives people a total of nine months of potentially staying in the property when they potentially could have been evicted. Now, this is good for tenants. This is good for people that uh, could potentially be foreclosed upon right now just because of where unemployment is and where numbers are, but there's a big downside to this. Uh, for one, it doesn't protect landlords. It, there's no, there's nothing given to landlords here to protect them. And, and so that's a huge downside here. And in addition to that, you also don't have protection for homeowners who have loans that aren't federally backed. And that all go, also goes for tenants. If you're renting a property and the loan is not federally backed on that property, you're also not protected. And, you know, we're going to take a look at the releases that came out yesterday from FHFA as well as HUD. And we're also going to look at a piece of state legislation that is trying to get passed that it has the potential to actually happen here in the state of California that is going to protect tenants even more so uh, than the eviction and foreclosure moratorium. And I'd love to get your thoughts. You know, as always, I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking. So do me a favor, comment below on the topic. I'd love to hear what you guys are saying. Do you like it? Do you disagree with it? You know, what are your questions? And, and I'll do my favor, you know, my best to go back through it and, and, and take a look at those. But before we get into those releases, I want to take a minute and ask a favor. If you're new to me, new to my channel, it's all about real estate, helping buyers, helping sellers, helping tenants just navigate you know the home buying home selling and the leasing process and we touch on topics like this with with regards to mortgage forbearance evictions you know foreclosures etc so if that is of interest to you at all do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and stay up to date on all things real estate related and if you like the content give me a thumbs up it helps uh, get the information out there and helps me accomplish my goal of helping educate buyers sellers tenants and, um, and pass along useful information. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch, but let's take a minute and dive into those releases. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the actual releases from FHFA, then we'll go to the one from FHA, from HUD directly after it. What I'll do is I'll put the links below in the description if you want to access that information and read it uh, verbatim. You know, I've actually highlighted a couple of things in here. I didn't go through, I'm not gonna read the entire thing. I'm just gonna point out the things that I feel like are helpful because a lot of the language is the same, but essentially just give you an idea of, of what this means. So let's take a minute here and, and pull up those uh, releases. So this one is actually from FHFA. It goes on to say today to help homeowners at risk of losing their homes due to the coronavirus national emergency, the Federal Housing Finance Agency announced that Fannie and Freddie will extend the moratoriums on single families uh, and REO evictions until the end of December. Now, when they say single families, they're also talking about condos. They're talking about townhomes. Uh, so it's not just detached single family residences, just FYI. The foreclosure moratorium applies to enterprise backed single family mortgages only. Like I mentioned that, that pertains to condos and townhomes. The REO eviction moratorium applies to properties that have been acquired by an enterprise through foreclosure or deed in lieu of foreclosure transactions. The current moratoriums were set to expire at the end of August. That has been extended. Now let's take a minute here and look at the one from FHA. FHA. Uh, today, the Federal Housing Administration announced the third extension of its foreclosure and eviction moratorium through December 31st for homeowners with FHA insured single families covered through the CARES Act. Uh, the moratorium continues to direct mortgage services to halt all new foreclosure actions and suspend all foreclosure act actions currently in process for FHA insured single family properties excluding legally vacant or brand abandoned property. So if the property has been abandoned, ab abandoned, um, it can still be foreclosed upon. Um, cease all evictions of persons from FHA insured single family uh, properties, excluding actions to evict occupants of legally vacant or abandoned properties. 
Homeowners with FHA insured mortgages should continue to make their mortgage payments during the foreclosure and eviction moratorium if they are able to do so or seek payment forbearance through the CARES Act. It does say FHA does not require a lump sum payment at the end of the forbearance period. So real short here. If you haven't filed mortgage forbearance, you still can do that and you can get up to 12 months of relief. That will give you a year from whenever you file it to have no mortgage payments. And if you're with FHA, they are guaranteeing you no lump sum payments and you have the potential to do a partial claim and add it to the back of the loan. What's a partial claim? I'll mention it here above in the comments or in the uh I'll add it as a video so that you can watch it and, and, and find out what a partial claim is. If you have Fannie or Freddie, they give you different repayment options, uh, lump sum payment, you know, a, a restructuring of your loan, potentially a loan modification, some sort of repayment plan or the deferment option where you can put those payments on the back of your loan. Let's take a peek at that state legislation that I mentioned earlier as it's currently in negotiation. They were working on it yesterday, August 27th. They were supposed to continue those negotiations today, but let's take a look at the language that they have so far. As of now, I don't believe it actually has a number for the assembly bill. Uh, it's it's still unknown, uh, but let's take a look at what we have so far and, uh, and see try to make some sense of it here. So this is the COVID-19 Tenant Relief Act. This is for California. This does not apply to other states. So if you're in another state, you may have something coming up. And this is being done on the Apartments Association. So the California Apartments Association is the one behind uh, this legislature. Uh, but anyhow, the legislation is intended as an alternative to AB 1436, the free rent bill uh, that was proposed some time ago. Their goal is to provide help for tenants who are truly affected by COVID-19, as well as compensation for landlords, mom and pop owners at risk of foreclosure after several months without payments. Now, the COVID-19 Tenant Relief Act of 2020 is what it's being called it is expected to include protections for tenants who cannot pay their full rent due to lost income attributable to the pandemic. It would also ensure that landlords can evict tenants who wreak havoc at their rental communities. Further, the bill promises to foster communication between landlord and tenants so both parties can work together, blah, blah, blah. Legislation would require that tenants impacted by COVID-19 start paying at least some of their rent. Some of the things that I have heard on this is that they would potentially be required to pay 25% of the rent due over the next five months. It would allow tenants to repay the remaining 75% of rent on or before May 31st. This may cost rental property owners and operators several thousands of dollars for each and every eviction. Um, you know, there is a big push by the California Association of Realtors to write assemblymen, et cetera. So we don't know what the full bill entails at the moment, but as we get more information, I'll definitely put it out there to you. Uh, but that's all we have on it now. But there is, you know, there are things happening you know, to try to get more protection for homeowners and potentially get some money for landlords. All right, so as you can see from the releases, it's much of the same language that they've used before. They've essentially just changed the dates on it, uh, pushing it out until the end of December. If you notice in there, they do leave language that says or could mean that they could potentially extend this even further in the future, depending on what's happening at that time. Unfortunately, we don't know what's going to happen in three to four months, but my guess is if it's a lot like what's going on right now, they could potentially push this out again, um, giving people even more time to get back on their feet. Uh, but as always, we don't know, and I will continue to update you as I get information. But you know, for now, I appreciate you taking the time. I appreciate your support, and uh, I look forward to seeing uh, your comments below and uh, on the next video as well. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.